Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Yo, Hello, welcome, welcome to Drinking Bros. This is Super Bowl weekend. We have an all timer, an all time great, amazing. Yeah. All-timer. Speaking all-timer. of Super Bowls, all-timer. I don't drop my voice down. <laughs> Not old timer, no. No, here's no. the thing. I thought you meant to say old timer. You're no. you're a young man who's still jacked. Yeah. What, I mean, what is going on oh, here? You, see, you want to see what's behind all this? Yes, I do. I can tell you what, I, I feel great right now. I'm telling you, I, I feel better than I did when I was playing at the right old age of 22. I'm 46 years old, and I'm telling you, I feel fantastic. And a lot of it is because I'm taking my product, the CBD drinks that we just have. And it's got, um, you know, it, it's really transformed my life. After football, really about the last 10 years, I've been struggling with, like, joint and uh, knee pain. Sure. Inflammation. Uh, anxiety, and for my entire life, I've been struggling with migraine headaches. So, been taking the CBD that which is in our products, and it has really transformed my life. And I'm excited that I'm able to share this and try to help other people transform their lives because it just, I'm telling you, I feel like. I'm about to train again for. You look like you're about to train again. I, do you I wonder where the plumber is because these pipes are fucking clogged, <laughs> my man. You know what we should do? Some, you know what we should do? Navarone right there. Do you know what we should do is probably say what his fucking name is at some point? Oh, come on. <laughs> if the audience doesn't know, <laughs> it's Terrell Davis, uh, all, uh, the Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. In my opinion, you went in a little bit too late. Too, well, no, it's never too late. It's always the right time. And I always believe this. Listen, God is. God. May they always say is that he may not come when you want him to come, but he's always going to be on time. Yeah, right. Did you, so you felt that was on time, or did you? Did you? I thought you were a first ballot guy myself. I, well, I certainly appreciate that. Uh, probably just you felt that way. No, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't. My fantasy football team felt that way. I love it. A lot of people. Like, how, how many got, How many running backs got two Super Bowls and have rushed for two thousand yards? Yeah. Um, and Lee giving P. Zero, right? <laughs> Zero. Zero. So when you look at those stats, on, how man. is there any debate in my eyes? Because when when I heard that, I was like, "This this, this can't yeah. be." Yeah, well, it's not just it, because it's the Hall of Fame, and, and I can't, you know, I can't change that. Like, I, I I don't vote, and you, you don't have any say so over that. But I told him, I said, "Hey, if you gave me something and said if you do this, then we can put you in earlier." Like, say, "Hey, TD, if you rush for hundred yards right yeah. now, we'll yeah. put you in the Hall of Fame." I said, "Then I can go, I can go train for yeah. that." Yeah, yeah. You can't but control I the can't outcome. Yeah, right. yeah. So I have to wait. For other people to make a decision on whether I, I go in or not. That's a good outlook, though, to have. Because you don't, like, right, you'll, you'll get all mentally fucked up if you worry about what other people are doing. Out on yeah. You can't control. Sure. And so I never thought about it. And listen, when it happened, it allowed me to appreciate it when it happened because it happened 11 years later. Right. And I had a chance to think about it, see other people go in. And I had a greater, you know, I guess a greater uh, appreciation for it once it happened. So. What I mean by God always says that he's going to make it happen when he feels like it's right for you. That's what he did. Cool. But was there any nights where you said, hey, God, can you speed this up a little bit? Because so-and-so got in. And I, <laughs> I know I was better than so-and-so. Yes. Who, who is the guy that you thought you were better than that got in before you? Know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Ross is a oh, gossipy bitch. Bros. I'm oh, just getting no. warmed up. Is Have it? you seen my pipes? <laughs> Come on, daddy. I, I, see I got a little bit of CBD <laughs> pumping through these veins as well, my dude. You got to call the plumber. Man. I, I am jacked, You're like an El Camino in a Mexican's front yard. I am just jacked. No, nah, brother. But there had to be there had been somebody. That right? was there really was specific. That I was better than. But what I said was that looking at the guys that were going in, you kind of figured this sort of time. So you kind of wait your your turn, mm-hmm. and guys are going in, and you're like, okay, he went in. You know, when Jerome Bettis went in, I was like, okay, so now it's time. Yeah, because Jerome went in, and right or wrong, I had a, I had a, a, a voter. Who said that TD? He says fair or unfair. Mm-hmm. You can't go in until Jerome Bettis gets in. And I said, all right, fair. Like I can't control it. If that's, if that's the way you guys see it, that's fine. Yeah, I have no problems with it because Jerome deserves to be in. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. And the problem with the hall is just you can't say who who belongs and who doesn't because all those guys are so good that all, most of the guys, no, all of them, yeah, who go in deserve to be there. Sure. So. I just had to wait my turn. Now, I did say that if the hall was going to wait until I was 60 years old, right. they can keep it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had an over-under of like, hey, at 60, at 60 you can go I, to hell. I can't, I can't use it at 60. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Now you can. Yeah, I'm using that. Yeah. <laughs> so you just like, <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you stand in front of a mirror wearing that gold jacket to stare at yourself or what? You have to, I right? Did, I, did the first, <laughs> I did the first six months. 
Because it's like fucked up. It's like, holy shit. Yeah, you, but you drive around in it like the first night and go through McDonald's and be like, oh, I'm sorry. Here, I, I here's did, a I five. Did, yeah, you have to, I right? Did, like when you, win, when you win the Masters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wearing the green jacket, yeah. Jacket. yeah. I was on an airplane, as a matter of fact. Uh, you saw the video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm on an airplane. I get on, and I, we had just, I think I was flying back. We had flown back to, to Denver um, in a jet, in a private jet, by the way. And then I ended up having to fly home. Hashtag private life. life. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing so, worse than flying commercial, so is there? They took me from a private jet to a commercial flight. <laughs> that was a big downer. So I left Canton, flew to Denver in a private jet, left Denver, flew to L.A. in a... Uh, L.A. on commercial from commercial. Cleveland? From Cleveland? No, 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 no from Denver. Denver. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So that was fun. I walked on the plane. I had it, I had it on. It was, I was actually, it was in my bag. And then everybody was like, hey, man, let's, let us see the jacket. And I said, you guys want me to put it on? So I put the jacket on right there in the terminal and had, you know, taking pictures with people in the terminal. So I walked on the plane with it and got on the plane and talked to the fans on, on the plane. It was it was fun. It was really cool to do it, man. And uh, but that was that was the last time I actually wore it like, like in public. The only time I wear it now. Is if like, I were you, I would wear that and nothing else all the time. I would just like, <laughs> yeah, did cock wife, out. Did your wife say, hey, come home, put on the Hall of Fame jacket, and let, well, let's get after it? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I no hey, listen, my kids, my wife don't care about that jacket. It's weird, right? I love that. That's that my jacket. favorite yeah, thing, how, like, yeah, uh, <laughs> my, my, one of my favorite <laughs> things wait, is. Wait, 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 real quick. Because I came yeah. home, and I said, all right, cool. I said, oh, I'm, man, I'm going I'm to run this house now. I got to go with jacket. I'm not going to take out the trash. I'm not washing the dishes. I'm not going to pick up nothing. Yep. That's hilarious. That for a One of my favorite things is when uh, celebrity and athletes' kids are bigger fans of other people. Oh, yeah. That's so Did funny. Did that happen with you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Who are your kids' Yeah, who they like? So Cam Newton is my oldest son's okay. favorite. Really? Yeah. He's not going to win a Super Bowl. Yes. Well, Do you he, tell him that? Like, hey, your dad won too. That Cam Newton's not going to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> It just doesn't register to him. That I'm <laughs> it like will. Cam, because Cam is so cool right now. Sure, and yeah. Cam played in the Super Bowl. I mean, he, he played with, when he played against the Broncos. But yeah. he didn't win it. He didn't win it. They yeah. don't care. Cam they don't his care. favorite player. His favorite team, my oldest son's favorite team, the 49ers. My middle son's te- favorite team. He has two favorite teams for some reason. The Browns. All right. And the Jets. I, I like any wow, kid so he who likes chooses an underdog. Shitty teams is yeah, what you're yeah. saying. But he, no, he chooses an underdog <laughs> yeah. city that's probably not going to win for a while. Yeah. Do you ever walk around and say, cool, those, those teams that you like, they're never going to have rings like your dad has. And then you show them the two no, Super Bowl so rings? I try, to, I try to persuade them to be more of an L.A. fan. So yeah. the Chargers and the Rams. Okay. Well, the Chargers, have, he'd be the only L.A. fan for the Chargers. <laughs> no. Let's face, they don't have um, one no. fan. They, they don't, don't have either. one single fan I'm there. I grew up a Chargers fan. I'm from San Diego, so I was a huge Chargers fan. They, got, they don't have one. No. Have you been there? Have you have you been to a home game in yeah in the in the new uh, the because they play at the soccer field you know yeah, that right it, it is all the visiting team there and they were it, it was that way in San Diego but they have at least they got more than one fan uh, maybe two three <laughs> maybe two I would say stretch goals three maybe yeah one. and it's nice to have goals I had a, I had a vision board above my computer for many years you know what I'm saying hey you know what again I want them to be local. And want them to, to like the local team. make a long term investment in your team right you guys are going to be in L A for a while probably yeah you're not leaving are you. I hope not. Yeah, so. I hope not. I hope I'm in L.A. Yeah, I did too. Ever thought about coaching? I did coach. I coached high school for two years. Um, and it was it was cool. It was cool. I, I, like, I like high school better because I, I had done an internship with the, with the Redskins, and I was, I was mm. thinking about being a coach. And it was a three-week internship. And about halfway through it, I walked to Mike Shanahan and said, thank you, but no thank you. I basically I walked out of there. Because I saw their hours. I saw what they put into it. It's crazy, right? And I said, I, I cannot envision my life like and, this. And you looked at that paycheck and you were like, oh, no. The high school coach check is real. Oh, shit. That's, <laughs> what is it, 18 grand? I mean, it's it's something. I, so, honestly, they paid me um, two grand a year. $2,000. $2,000. That's like a meal for you. Like that's like a that's like a Tuesday the, meal. No, of course not. I was there to help these kids get better and be better young men and and you know and learn the game of football and I enjoyed it, but uh, high school, uh, I just couldn't commit the time to it either. Yeah. So I would I would show up probably two days a week and then their games are on Friday. Sure. And I catch their games, and I was a, I was just a, a position coach and so the head coach ended up getting fired the second year. We had an all pro a whole. Uh, uh, NFL uh, coaching staff. Uh-huh. We had Ben Coleman, was an offensive line mm-hmm. coach. Byron Chamberlain was a tight ends coach. What high Austin school was, was this? It was called uh, 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 Christian. Okay. It was called um, 
Chris, uh, not Oaks Christian. I would have sent my kids there ASAP. I mean, well, we had just so the program just started though. Like we, they built the program from scratch. Really? Okay. Yeah. Kind of like an Oak Hill Academy, like that yeah. type of joint. Scratch, and we were gotcha. trying to schedule the big dogs. The problem was we were trying to schedule like modern day. Ooh, you know, we schedule Servi. Yeah, they, those schedule. guys have been good for years and years. And I mean, those are institutions where look, you're moving your family there, yeah. so your kids yeah. are going to get a D1 scholarship, <laughs> and it's the best of the best. Yeah, uh, over there. And that was not a pretty theory. And then the second year, we in, he ended up getting fired because we were scheduled such uh, steep top competition, and we right. only had like 19 kids on our football team. So we oh shit! Like wow, it was a battle of attrition, and we wouldn't we wouldn't make it. So they 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 fired him and said you're putting our kids in, in harm's way. And they went, They came to me behind his back and asked me to be the head coach. And I told him I, I couldn't commit to it. That's the sure. only reason I was really coaching because was was because of him. I just couldn't put the time into it. Yeah. A- any thought of coaching in the NFL ever? Like no, I told you I did an internship and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Really? So so no, no thought if somebody hired you, hey man, come on and be. How much you paying me, by the way? That's a good question. I also wonder how much you feel responsibility to pass your institutional knowledge on to the next generation. And there's a lot I of time, there's though. a lot of ways to do that without coaching, exactly. though, right? Yeah, you don't have to coach. You know, I'm I'm in the media with the NFL, so I, I have a, a lot of times that I can see guys on the set at the Super Bowl, at the combine. I get a chance to pull them aside and talk to them, and I'm not like obligated to be there and you know spend hours trying to do that. And I, I don't have to have a loyalty to one franchise. I can do it with everybody. So I, I try to do it a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I call them up, text them, like Saquon Barkley and Philip Lindsay this year, and you know, guys that I. Who, see who do you think's the best young running back in the league right now? Oh man, Saquon. Saquon's probably. He's got to be Saquon. What, right? What's up with this guy? He's he's pretty legit. He's a right? real deal. He's. I, I I remember the first time I saw Saquon, I was watching USC play Penn State yeah. in the Rose yeah. Bowl, and I I went to that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm watching and. He just he caught my eye. I'm like, who is this guy? I had never heard of him before that. So I text my buddy Anthony Lynn, who's the head coach of the mm-hmm. Chargers. His son went there, and I said, Anthony, who is this kid? Um, and he says, TD. He said he's the real deal. Yeah, and I he said, is. Okay, he's got the whole package. Like it's two baddies up there, to be honest, because in a major at the Giants in a yeah. major me like I know New York is New York, but in a, the Giants, fuck the Giants. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and a better, the, why are you taking that personal? Why? What's up well, with I'm that? just saying. I don't. I don't care. The okay. Giants suck. Uh, so. In a better media market for him, he would be. Bl- he's a good-looking dude. He does everything well. What do you mean, he's in the market. best what, 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 media market. Is he's in New York? He's in New York. He just market. has a shitty team. That's, what, that's what I mean. The shit. It's not the. It's not the market itself. It's the Giants. No one gives a fuck about the Giants. Yeah, right. I, don't, I think they do. I think they do too. We do. But when when they when I don't they think so. Good. The when they become good again. Like, who was your team growing up? Who who's Denver. your guys? Denver man. Denver. Are yeah. you a Denver guy? Do you live in Denver? Yeah, it's Denver native, and I uh, grew up there and. I actually went to the Super Bowl and saw him play, and you know, so and then we met years later through a business deal, and it was actually kind of surreal. So I was like, I was at all the games. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty I was rad. At the yeah. game where you got two thousand yards. Well, yeah. So, oh, you were there. I remember yeah, I was seeing there. you there too. By the yeah, way, do you I'm have like, that ball? I was like, oh, I know. That. I'll see you in about I, ten I'm like, years. I'm gonna meet yeah. this guy in like twenty years <laughs> <laughs> down the road. Do you down have, the road. Do you, so you saw him carrying Elway those last two years. Oh yeah, I'm much, kidding. Yeah. No, John, <laughs> let me let me ask kidding. you this. Do you ever call John Elway and leave messages on his phone? And be like, hey, you know what? You wouldn't have shit without me, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still sore from carrying I'm, I'm you. Might, I might do that. I'm kidding. You should do it. It'd be fucking hilarious if you did that. No. Uh, super funny. You know how it is, man. Not yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, listen, he, we all played a role. That's that was important. We had to play that role. It, re- it really was, and I, I felt Denver itself played really. I, you guys were the definition of team ball. I think during yeah, those two years time, of yeah. the Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a diehard Falcons fan. You guys beat us. Um, That's the Super Bowl I was at. Oh, uh, you were at that yeah. game, yeah. boy. Yeah, my pleasure. You guys were doing the dirty bird. Hurt. Yeah, we, we, in the stands we created Jamal the dirty Anderson. Donkey. We still have not won yet. Yeah, we were doing the dirty donkey back. Yeah. The oh yeah, 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 yeah. I knew that was, was going down when when Eugene Robinson got arrested the night before. <laughs> like, we're not going to win this. Oh, we did too. <laughs> you did right. Do you guys talk about oh, that in the locker room? Too. Oh, absolutely. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This is hilarious. No, this by the way. Yeah. So Do, that, you, hey, that, would you want to tell the audience what happened with Eugene Robinson so they don't have yeah, to look it up? Yeah, he got arrested for prostitute. Prostitute. <laughs> prostitute. <laughs> prostitute. Yeah. Yeah. He was in Miami. Yeah, it was in Miami. I woke yeah. up and I came downstairs to, to have breakfast and, and everybody's in the, you know, the, like I guess it's a, the little 
in the hotels, what do they call them? The uh, lobby? Not the lobby, but they have a little, little, little breakfast little conference nook. room. Yeah. Conference oh, yeah, room, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And they have Business there. center. <laughs> Fax machines and, everywhere. And, and I could just hear, every, I mean, everybody's flipping through the newspaper and they're reading, all, they're reading the newspapers all over the uh, the place where we're eating breakfast. And you can just hear chatter like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then when, when, as soon as I walked in, somebody was like, did you hear what happened? I'm like, no, what happened? And uh, it was like uh, Eugene Robinson got arrested last night. And the first thing I thought was, Do got it. him. <laughs> <laughs> got him. I knew it because I was up. We were up late partying, getting ready yeah. for the Super Bowl and stuff. Yeah. You know, that's I'm a hilarious. college kid. And I'm like, oh, no, we just lost. Like, <laughs> I didn't even have that's to the, watch the, the game. Sign. That's yeah, the yeah. I was like, like we that, just that goes, lost. That goes on before a game like that. You know it is not a good sign. No. Every single time. And, and he was the humanitarian of the of year. Of the year. Of the year. Like, <laughs> oh, that no. night. The, yes. That I, night. He got I the trophy. Of like, hey, you were the nicest, greatest person for giving back to the NFL. What are you going to do now? I'm going to get a prostitute. I'm going to get a prostitute and celebrate this. Well, would you rather get a prostitute or go to Disney World? That's what everybody says. I'm going to Disney World. That's Fuck a toss up. Well, he probably, I, I he probably felt like he earned it. Yeah. Like, you know, it was like yeah. a free pass. Life's a journey. Yeah. Like, you hey, either get a prostitute or you go to Disney I get a free World pass. in this There's life. There's no way I can get caught for this now. No. I'm the humanitarian of the year. No, not at all. You not know? at all. That time it was well, it didn't work out for him, I guess. So. <laughs> exactly. Like, that, that, was was a, that was I, a bad choice. Yeah, it was like, terrible. You know, like, what should I do tonight? It's a terrible Maybe choice. wait one more goddamn night. Yeah. yeah. One more Just night. One more night he, if he had waited prostate. one more Just night, it would have been fine. And they, you guys, who knows what would have happened. Right? But the, the opportunity was there. Uh, it was like, you just couldn't pass it up. It's the crime, but, hey, you know, crime triangle. Listen, Eugene, yeah. is, uh, he's a good friend. You know, I see him often. And... Uh, I appreciate you doing. You know, I appreciate it, but you know, uh, boy, Eugene. I, look, no, I love you as a Falcons fan, but in Craigslist, two hundred roses means something else, brother. Come on, that showbiz, baby. Um, I, I know what that means, obviously. How long did you end up playing? How many years? Um, Ninety-five to two thousand one, right? Yeah, they can, so seven years. S- seven years. I retired at the beginning of my eighth year. My eighth year, I was on injury reserve. Yeah. So yeah, I don't count that year. So it's it's eight years, but. Technically seven. I love that's how great you were, that you only played seven years, and you yeah. are a Hall of Fame running back, which is amazing. What, what, did, did the injuries and all that stuff take a toll, uh, and that's why you got it? Like, you left on your own, right? No. I didn't I know wish. that. I, I, I didn't know I that. just couldn't play anymore. So, really? Yeah, the game kicked me out. And so the last year, actually the last three years, I couldn't, I just couldn't play. And I was just – I was always hurt. I mean, I remember and, watching you in games where you, like, the, the reporters would be talking about how you have a fucking migraine on the sideline and you go in and fucking get beat up on a couple of runs. Like, yeah. what the fuck, man? Yeah. yeah. How, the, how do you even migra- do that? The migraines are tough, but I can still perform physically. Yeah. So – If you yeah. got the focus, yeah. Yeah, because even though the, the headaches are pounding and, you know, the nausea and you know, all that stuff – I was able to work through that because I, I had dealt with that my entire life. Right. So I've, I've played in games with that. The, the hard part is playing when you, when you don't have, you know, your knees. You have swelling in your knees, mm-hmm. or you have pain. You have sprained ankles, or high high ankle sprains, or turf toe, or, or something with your lower body as a back is tough to play. Yeah. So I could fight through the migraines. It was just the physical things. I, I would play one week and look fine, and then I'd miss two games. Yeah. Right? And I'd play again, look fine. And I missed three games. So right? let's let's bring that's in your company that you're you're doing now, Defy. Yeah. Uh, do you think if you had access to this kind of treatment back then, you would have had a longer career? I think there's no question about it because I retired because I had uh, inflammation in my yeah. in my knee and in my joints, and I couldn't get it out. And it your choice your choices at that point are like surgeries that put you out or taking pills. That's right? what it is. It's taking more pills. It's it's just you know doing it. And I wasn't a big fan of that at the time. And uh, and even if I did uh, do that, it still just wasn't it just wouldn't respond. Right. And so I was concerned with taking pills because of kidney issues and then being yeah, addicted long term, to yeah. long term effects of taking the pills. And it just, you know, we hear stories about it and you try to mask it. It wasn't healing. It was just masking the issue. Yeah. And so what we have here is def- in Defy is that we have an all natural product in CBD that is the highest quality you can get. And it, it really has transformed my life. And, I, and like I said before, this is probably the most transformative ingredient within the last ten years. And and that, and this in the, in the future, this is the future of sports. Yeah, I agree. The science community is already behind it, and now Congress 
like two weeks ago, right past that farm bill that's going to allow production of CBD. So th- there's a whole lot of shit going yeah. on for you yeah, guys. Yeah, right yeah. and are you following that as a company? Like, hey, are you are you watching what's going on in Congress and the NFL? <laughs> yeah, ab- well, absolutely. That's, I mean, the business side of it is fascinating. You know, I came from the investment world where there's a lot of regulation, you know, hedge funds, mutual funds, all that stuff. Get that mic up closer. Yeah, yeah, oh, there, there, there you go. There you go. And, uh, you know, the, when we were, so we, you know, we became friends and we started looking into some of these things and then, you know, CBD came along and it was, uh, it's like the wild west right now. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, that need to happen. Uh, but there, there but, is, yeah. Cause but, we, we've been pitched CBD yeah. companies and oh, they'll, yeah, they'll send you packets the in the yeah. mail. Uh, we tried the gummy bears, I believe. I I've for- tried everything. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. We, uh, yeah my, our audience knows what I've tried. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some of the stuff, I mean, it's probably well, some good stuff, but a lot of stuff you have to really be careful because it might say one thing. How is it regulated? Well, Correct. especially well, if you're well, a fucking athlete that gets tested or, or something like that. Like, you can. Well, if you have CBD, I mean, you should be fine. Yeah, but guys pop you hot. To, you should be, yeah. Guys well, pop ours, ours has zero THC. Yeah, zero so, right, exactly. So yeah. Ours is backed by. That's what I'm saying. There's. When you talk about a difference in a product, there the spectrum is as big as it gets because you have right. people that are grinding this out in like you know a, their basement yep. to what we're doing, which is in a lab. It's scientific. It's scientifically backed, and it's measurable and repeatable. And so you know that the, you know the regulation and, and there's standards that need to come into it are going to be actually a good thing because right now yeah, sure, there's yeah. a lot of. There's there's a lot of fraud, you know. There's a lot of snake oil sales. There's got to be yeah. a, lot. Yeah. a, a lot, lot, yeah, yeah, a lot. We you know, get, people, we get pitched it all the time. Oh, yeah. That's why I bring make, it up yeah. because, it, in particular, for veterans, yep, they always go the veteran route and say, no, 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 it'd be great for them, great for them. And I was like, great, send us a sample. And then you know, Dan will try to whatever and be like, this, this, I don't feel anything. This is yep. shit. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the other thing too is a lot of the products out there. So we've. That's why it's taken us so long to, to get to where we are because we, we, we did it the right way all the way along from the formulation of the drinks to the type of, you know, who we're doing, getting the CBD from to the delivery system because, you know, everybody – I mean, I can't tell you how many meetings we went into where people were like, nobody else can do what we do. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah, the best thing that. that everybody says the only that. Ones I know. That's can do This is the best thing ever. Really? That's and what I used to say to girls in college. <laughs> no one else can do what I do. What I'm going to do in the bedroom tonight is going to be the best <laughs> night of your life. Like, <laughs> it's not true. And it's it not worked, true. It worked yeah. a few times. I mean, but then, it worked but enough then. times, but I knew I couldn't deliver on that promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it's the same thing. And so there, you know, it's, <laughs> that's why we're, we're excited about it because we know what we're doing is right. And when, when the FDA – comes in as they should i mean we want to work with them not against them you know we're we welcome all that stuff but there's a lot of people in the industry that are that are there to make a buck and get out right and they're going to be forced out at some point yeah, but turn and burn right yeah, yeah turn and burn and the other thing too is uh and this is a big problem that we found there's a lot of products on the market that say say they have cbd in it we yeah. tested them some yeah. products don't even have there's nothing in yeah. it. Yeah, what are you they know? using as a substitute? Let me ask. It's probably you that. just oil and, and filler, right? It's bullshit. Who knows? Probably nothing. I have no idea. Yeah. I've probably taken you know because we've tried a lot of this stuff yeah, yeah. and <laughs> a little you know I've probably taken some stuff that I shouldn't have taken. Yeah. You know, but yeah, was in, there, in was the there, trial was there nights where you were like, oh shit, that was not CBD. <laughs> this is I was like, this what? is fucking was peyote, bro. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> No, there was I was in a bar in West Hollywood, and I felt like that. He goes, "No, no, no, it's CBD," and I was like, "This is not CBD." (laughs) You're like, "Why am I?" Let me ask you this: Why is it just a pupil? (laughs) You know, like where's my eye? So you have. uh, (laughs) I mean, we know CBD is getting more pervasive now, so it's uh, the effects of it are, are becoming more well known, but. So you had migraines before. You have yeah. joint inflammation, all, yeah. all this other stuff. What is it What is it helping you with personally? So the biggest thing is really the, the migraine, and it's allowed me to get off my, my anti-inflammatory. So with migraine headaches, the one thing I was taking, well, anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Something called naproxen. So you have like uh, uh, hypertension in your in your in the top of your head. Because I've had the same issue, right? Yeah. but With migraine? So, so what they yeah. gave me for, so for migraine, they told me what could possibly cause it. And yeah. you might as well just, I might as well live in a bubble. Yeah, it's it's nonsense. Yeah, everything yeah, it's can cause like it. sleep hygiene, light, yep. like uh, tension in the top of your scalp because they're, they're doing eating, like eating chocolate. I mean, yeah, all kinds of bullshit. Uh, sunlight. Yeah, like uh, fuck that. Gremlins. Right? You can't gremlins. Yeah, gremlins. I'm still worried about gremlins. gremlins. You can't feed them after <laughs> the worry. No. You can't feed them after Don't midnight. feed them. You can't no. do it. You can't so, do it. So with that, what they put me on, they prescribed was the uh, anti-inflammatory naproxen. Yeah. And so for years, I'm on anti-inflammatory. Yeah. The problem is. My kidneys, I'm concerned yeah, about that. Yeah, it fucks that, you up, right? yeah. 
And so, and I'm always worried. So I, I got off of it for, I don't know, a few weeks. And I'm like, okay, I'm tired of taking it. I'm not going to take it. But I'm always concerned about a migraine. And mm-hmm. sometimes the migraine comes. Yeah. Well, the last year, I've been taking the CBD. And it really acts as an anti-inflammatory to me. So I can't make any claims about anybody else. But it has allowed me to stop taking my migraine medication, which is awesome. And that's why I feel so good. I don't worry about having an episode now. I'm not, I'm not afraid to go. A workout because working out was actually one of the causes. Yeah, I had yeah. insertional migraines. Yep. So I can play football and the, and the trigger could just happen. Right. I can go lift weights, the trigger could happen. I can look at a light, the trigger could happen. I don't fear that anymore. So that's what that's how it's helped. So it like me in frees my you life. up to live your life. Exactly. Well, You're not always yeah. walking around on the eggs. You're just trying to figure out. Cause I used to fly an airplane. Yeah. And uh, as a pilot, how many hours whoa, you got? Whoa, whoa. Oh, you actually flew the plane. How many hours yeah, you got? Pilot. What kind of birds? I got 600 hours. Oof. I had a Mooney ovation. Oh, really? Damn. 2006 ovation. We got to hook up with Jared and this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of our co-hosts. You want to roll? You want to roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've one, got a, one of our co-hosts okay. was Air Force. Yeah, we got so, a plane. Yeah. He, he flies plane? helicopters. Which, got all which one? You got a real a real plane there. Mm, um, what you got? I don't know. Actually, he's got a little He's got a little bird. So he flies helicopters. Yeah, we have all sorts of stuff. And then what is he flying? He flew to the Bahamas last week. Yeah. And I'm from from from, uh, from Florida somewhere in Florida somewhere in Florida yeah, yeah. I flew to the Bahamas from California did you oh, really shit that was a trip man. that's a long way <laughs> did you ever that's watch that John Denver way. doc and be like hey, man yeah. 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 I did watch I, did I know watch. you have to or watch. JFK Jr. right he went right? down in twenty seconds because he has spatial dis um, or, I mean he was just because when you fly and you, people don't think this is possible you need a co pilot. No, when you fly into God a God is your co-pilot. When you, yeah, yeah. You, you, don't, <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't think this is possible, but you have no idea what's up, what's down. Yeah, if you lose the horizon, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you're so, fucked. It's like, how do you not know? that you, People think like you can feel the gravity in there, but you can't. You can't. No, you have so to check. The instruments is the only thing you got. You yeah. trust the instruments. Yeah. instruments. He was not instrument rated. Ah, so he, that's, he went to bad mm. weather, and he thought he was pulling up, but he was actually inverted. And so he went down. Oof. Well, the wow. same thing happened to JFK Jr. Jr. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Close to, well, that was like uh, I was in New York when that happened. Yeah. Uh, I was in, well, I was I was in school there. Yeah, not, not yeah. Denver. Yeah, either way. Yeah. Uh, look, both of them died in a plane crash. But yeah. um, John Denver was like 28 seconds. I was like, ah, and then boom, yeah. gone. And you're like, holy did he shit! Did that plane though? He did. He did. Yeah. John Denver was about that life. <laughs> wasn't about anything <laughs> no, else, but he was about that life. But uh, he liked JFK uh, Jr. He liked West Virginia, I thought it was weather. It wasn't weather, huh? It was weather, but it wasn't the weather that brought him down. It was the fact it's he tried to maneuver. Thing. He yeah. tried to maneuver gotcha. where, he can't, where he couldn't see. He wasn't instrument rated. And it really tests you because you're looking at something. You have to trust the instruments. If you if you go off sensation and what you think the plane is reacting to, it is. No, that's a bad That's bad time right there. Good. Yeah. yeah. You don't it's, want to do that. It's not good. So you, you still fly today? I do not fly today. <laughs> Why not? So uh, 2010, actually 2006. Um, no, 10, when we had our first child, my okay. wife and I, uh, my wife was my co-pilot. No more flying. We would roll, and uh, <laughs> when we got pregnant, she just she was done. She did not want to take any more chances, so I got a plane sitting there in the hangar, and it's burning a hole in my pocket. So really? Like, didn't do, make do sense. Do you miss it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and, and I, used to, I used to take and go play golf a lot, and mm-hmm. so now when I'm playing golf, I'll see a plane fly over, I'm like, <clears throat> oh, man. I'm like. Yeah, I missed that. It's a Morgan Freeman look out the window in Shawshank <laughs> on that bus. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get busy living or get busy, busy dying. dying. Have you ever? I was uh, so excited. I have you ever jumped out? Of, have you ever jumped out of a plane? I did. I did that with my, with my wife. We jumped uh, tandem. Yeah, nice. Uh, we, you know, we, we we do it all. We I try to. Well, do you it. didn't do tandem together. You no, to... <laughs> we did it with hell. No, we did it with an instructor. Like, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this: how did, how did this male, presumably male instructor, feel with a fucking beef castle know, strapped right? to the front? Beef castle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. He was on my back. <laughs> he was, right? You were wearing yeah, him like a fucking a backpack. Bit, be like, hey, man, <laughs> just because you're behind me doesn't mean you're really behind me. So don't think. Yeah. Nah, I didn't care. <laughs> I, 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 I flexed up. up. I didn't care where he was, brother. As long as you get me down safely. That's all I cared about. <laughs> when I jumped, because I, I did it. I did it. Yeah. I did it. I did a tandem as well. And like, yeah. there was a guy behind me. I flexed up a little bit. I let him know. <laughs> Congratulations, dude. These are bear traps. Don't try to stick a paw in. Yeah, don't, do don't try to stick a paw in. You're going to get it caught in the bear trap. Yeah. Um, so that's, let's, that's how I was. Let's get back to the company Defy. Tell me, <laughs> tell me about the name and why you chose it. Because I, I think I know, but I want to hear the well, story. Defy is based off just sort of, uh, it's kind of my life really and just breaking through barriers, defying anything that I was told I couldn't do, we couldn't do, yeah. defying limitations, defying race, defying age, uh, just all that stuff. And it just, it just sort of, uh, 
encompasses everything. And to me, it's just an attitude that I like to, you know, you tell people, man, listen, whatever it is, you defy it. And because you know how it is, people are always going to tell you what you can't do. Yeah, fuck and, that. Uh, we want to yeah. defy. I'm a, I'm 46 years old. I'm trying to defy. You know, age. You're doing it now. I'm yeah, to you're. Age. I'm trying to defy. He, he, he's not gay. Way. Did you, you look great? He, I mean, <laughs> no, right. really, really he's super, great. He flexed up on me right there. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Look, tries it for the guys. You see that try on this yeah. guy? Yeah, Come like on, Oof. dude. God, I'm getting the hard. The curls are for the girls. I get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's gonna break I'm this glass. Trouble picking up this glass, or I might. So. Yeah, you're, you're still in shape. Look, there's a lot of players who aren't in shape afterwards. It's what hard. do you attribute yeah. that Let to? Me tell you why. Freddie Mitchell's raising his hand no. over there. He said he's got a wealth belly over there. Uh, yeah, it's t- you know, it's hard. It's, it's tough, right? Let me tell you why it's hard. You know, when you're working out and you're training to play football, all right, that's already difficult because it's it is it's the top training condition. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Once you don't have the motivation to, otherwise you're training. You're thinking, why am I training? Yeah. What am I doing? I ask myself that question damn near every day. Like, TD, you're not playing football again. What are you doing? So what's the answer? Looking good for your wife. I Looking just, good for everybody I, else. I try to fool myself. I just try to mentally just tell myself that I am training for something. And I don't ever want – number one, I think I have three kids now. So I try to, I'm trying to make sure I'm doing everything that I can do internally from a health standpoint and externally from a health standpoint to be there for my kids. Right. That's that's yeah. what I'm trying to do. And, you know, to the health aspect of it, I mean, it's so, you know, our kind of we're going to have a defined nation. It's going to be like a community yeah. that right. supports. And I mean, so part of this also is define, you know, really what's what's going on. I mean, it, w- w- the, some of the stuff that we were talking about CBD earlier yeah. is this is this is going to this is going to really be extremely impactful to the pharmaceutical industry because. It's real. Yeah, and they you don't know, give up. This, they don't give up easy. No, and no. you know, like they're a bunch of assholes. Man, I'll tell you, like, <laughs> frankly, yeah. well, you know, look, that, that's a cartel, in my opinion. I fucking hate the pharmaceutical industry. Total, they're you know, they're when, a bunch of fucking vultures. Well, and you know, so to your point, like the, the difference here. So TD, when we, we started doing this concept, and he started taking CBD a year ago and working out, he's back down to his plane weight. We'll, we'll show you the video. We'll show you a preview of the video later. But like of our, you know, our company, but back down to his playing weight looks like he can play you know he feels great but but the the big difference is to your point with no it's not only no side effects meaning no negative side effects right. but it's actually you know this is a this is an ingredient that can help heal you so it's actually truly a, a medicinal thing sure yeah. you know yeah. and so everything else out there it's not it doesn't it doesn't you know, fix you. It, it's just a band aid. Yeah, and it, it, well, if anything, yeah. it fucks you up. You know, so like, I mean, I remember when my my boy was ten. The funniest thing, and I was like, that's that was also you know, just one of these things that just popped it. It just sticks in my head. We're watching TV and we're watching one of those commercials, and at the end of the commercial, it's like, this could make your eyes bleed. Uh, you know, you might yeah. you might self the side effects. You could die. Anal you might leakage. Grow another arm. Yeah. It's, always like, anal leakage. it's always yeah. anal leakage. What the fuck? Reason, yeah. And you're like, yeah. how the fuck is this legal? Yes. You know. Yeah. And my dad was like, so my son like he like literally looks at me. He's like, Dad, who would ever take that? You know? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't Seventy know. percent of Americans. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. Most people yeah. yeah. So, but crazy. that's that's. There's so many things that are uh, that are promoted uh, health wise by just activity. If you're active, drink a lot of water and be active, you can solve so much shit. But somebody like you that's been through the physical uh, trauma is a strong word, but the physical yeah, trauma no, you've been through trauma. is yeah. like it will like severely limit your ability to do shit later in life. And veterans face this shit all the time. Right. So I was just talking to Josh earlier. He runs a, a UTI treatment program called D Mana, D E M A N N A. I think it's is yeah, that how you spell it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they do. Uh, one of the big things with them is activity, keeping stuff moving through the body, exactly. drink a lot yeah. of water and all that stuff. Yeah. But you can't do that if you're all fucked. But if your knees are all swollen up and shit, right. you just can't yeah. do that's, it. That's a great point because I, I wanted to be more active. Yeah. I just couldn't you know, because I had the in, you know, inflamed knees. Yeah. Where I had, I had li- limited mobility and range in my knee where motion where I couldn't even do a squat. And so – that yeah, that's not that's not enjoyable to go work out the fuck no, way, man. right? So when like you, you feel better, yeah. you don't want to go work out, yeah. And that's what it's done for me. It's allowed me to go work out and feel like, oh wow. And man, it's not just a good. it's not just a physical thing either. It's a psychological. Like Absolutely. endorphins get released, serotonin is increased. All the stuff that makes you happy as a human being happens when you're active at a more efficient level. There is no right? question. No it's, question. It's ridiculous. About it. So. When I see some like there's so much there's been so much resistance. I think people are starting to fucking calm down now. Yeah. But there's been so much resistance to CBD even even though there's no THC. Well, you right. know, the, it's so ridiculous, man. And the so back to the defy. Yeah. The, you know what are 
our, our real angle here is to create a real mainstream product. I mean, that's what we're doing. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like the anti-drug campaign because everybody's so focused on, well, it's some way associated with marijuana, even though whether it's hemp or yeah. it, it's, it's not, that's not what it, this is about. This is about something that can be helpful. So, you know, when you see kind of our, our kind of campaign, if you will, it's really, it's about the opposite of drugs, you know, and, and it's, 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 you know, these other, these other, uh, brands that have, been out there for years that they don't they don't want to see this come out yeah. you know so no, they're trying sure, to keep yeah. that they're trying to keep the the angle on it about the thc side the no, psychoactive F- side pfizer and these companies that. that produce percocet and all this other bullshit they're yeah. f- afraid to death of you guys they're they're dreading this whole like two weeks ago when that fucking farm bill passed they're like yeah. fuck it's man. coming now it's coming. what it's coming it's soon it. and like we're coming and look we we travel everywhere around the united states for the biggest games and all that stuff you and i were in a city where they were actually putting shots of cbd inside drinks at a bar yeah you pay an extra two dollars and it was like oh man yeah. it's almost still a little man, bit taboo where you look over well, your shoulder yeah. and you're well, like yo you know, am i can i, <laughs> can I do shot that it? can i do this can i like yeah it's 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 coming fast and it's taking over. It is, but. And, and I think this year, if I'm not mistaken, it would be the first year that there's going to be a Super Bowl commercial that's ran with a CBD. Car. No, really? it was, I think it got booted. No, it got it was a, it was a I'll marijuana be, based commercial. It, and was, it got yeah. it, it got, got nuked by off. the NFL. By the NFL, yeah. five million for a thirty marijuana? second spot. It was it was a I spot it was, about I, I yeah. Was, I thought it was just CBD. No, they talk cannabis. about both. I mean, they talk about both. Yeah, that's why I got next. Yeah, yeah, but it, that's stupid. Both. That's you stupid. Like no. we can drink this shit, which we're murdering ourselves with yes. slowly over time. <laughs> but well, you are, uh, Dan. Let's face it. <laughs> I've never seen a human drink like Dan. <laughs> if you don't know Anthony Anthony Holloway, this guy double Tito's everywhere he goes. They uh, his like name is Tito's. Double Tito's. Yeah, Double Tito's. Dan. Double Dan. Yeah. yeah. I do Don't double down, yeah. double Dan. Exactly. It's, it is what it is, man. Let's <laughs> it is what it is. Get your but, double Tito. The, well, yeah. the point is, is that I could smoke weed every day forever, and because THC is fat soluble, not water soluble. Yeah, it's going to clog my neural channels a little bit. You got to flush that out every now and again. But there's no long term damage to my liver and kidneys, right? My yeah. pancreas, yeah. et cetera. That this fucking alcohol is fucking me up. I know. You know what I mean? But it's so okay to drink that. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Not, not so that, stupid. Okay. Not only is it okay to drink that, but like you take pills, for example. Great. It's okay to prescribe that. What's the harm and danger in, in CBD is what I don't like. Why are you resisting that when you'd rather push everything else that could actually kill you? Well, well th- yeah. you know, look, th- think about, I mean, wh- wh- when marijuana was first made illegal, it was because Hearst was, it was about, it was about hemp paper. It wasn't even about, it was about the, the timber drug. industry. Yeah. It was yeah. about the timber, timber industry, versus hemp. They wanted to control so, the paper production so, in the 1930s. Know, it's fucking yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Dude. I mean, if you look at the like, history, they didn't, they didn't even call it marijuana back then. They called it cannabis. And then they yeah. changed it to marijuana to make it sound more Hispanic to and, make it and, scarier yeah, yeah. to Americans. And that's it's where so like fucking reefer stupid. madness came out. So yeah, it was big. Business Have you ever watched reefer madness? Have you no, guys, it's so oh my, oh my god, god it's so funny yeah it's so funny it it's is, like you are gonna die yeah. marijuana use <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's all these teenagers hang, hanging out with like people in their 30s and the people in their 30s are smoking weed so the teenagers start doing it and then somebody gets murdered at a fucking party yeah because you know how often people on that are smoking weed just randomly shoot yeah. people yeah. Right? yeah 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 that's As opposed to alcohol zero times in life. you know alcohol dangerous. never so causes stupid. fights no oh, oh my god, god. Never, so yeah. stupid you know, go it's actually on youtube madness. it's yeah. on youtube right. it was made by Check the united states government it's a massive broadway play it has been it's for so years. funny oh Holy you're talking shit. about the real reform like, yes you could the, go on the, youtube the, and the watch that shit yes Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They it's, made a fucking like promotional and video they made a play anti- after it, and, oh, and it's a so Broadway funny. play. Like uh, Kristen Bell was in, uh, like a bunch of people. This is going on for years and years and yeah. years. But originally, it was a scare tactic from the government of like, hey, here's what happens if you smoke reefer. Chances <laughs> yeah, are you're so a bad funny. kid. It's so you're funny. Die. It's so funny. And if you watch it, you're like, no way is this going on. But then you know the next commercial after it was like, cigarettes are great for you. Yeah, you exactly. Smoke them on airplane. Nine out of ten doctors were fucking American spirit cigarettes. It's like, crazy. What the Do you fuck? When people used to smoke on planes. Those are crazy. That's like, weird. Like, like think about it. It was the craziest thing ever. Oh yeah, yeah. Just yeah. hot boxing in a plane. It, weird, people right? Were, and then hey, they were kid. built. Ashtrays you know? were built into the yeah. seats. Oh yeah. yeah. I was a child, but like I mean, I remember. I like, still remember flying on planes that had the asteroids yeah. and the fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Art I remember the, I was on TWA. Remember TWA? Yeah, oh, yeah. I love yeah. TWA. 
They don't exist anymore. There's nothing like an airline <laughs> stewardess from TWA. <laughs> I mean, just smoking as they served you, yeah. too. Yeah, they don't give a shit. They yeah. were smoking. Yeah, they were like, can I use your ashtray? Yeah, everybody cool. was partying. Everybody everybody double was yeah, I mean, they had, they had players at halftime of games smoking cigarettes. Oh, yeah. Room. One of my favorite Still memories my in sports is Jim Leland from the Pittsburgh Pirates smoking in the dugout. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but there's no, there's no rule against it, right? So he just did it. He didn't care. There is yeah, now. Well, now. There is now. In the day. Then, there is now. Yeah. Great. Right. Then I mean, coaches were smoking. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was smoking. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. There was a Shane there's a famous Batman. there's a famous shot of a, one of the Super Bowl half times where the quarterback is smoking in the Namath? locker room. Uh, I don't think it was yeah. Namath. Didn't he smoke, he smoke on the sideline one time? Yeah, he smoked on the sideline. Yeah. There was another guy in the locker room. Uh, fuck, it was for the Colts. Quarterback of the Colts. He was great. And I'm going to get killed yeah, for this the, by uh, our Johnny, fans. Was it Johnny U? I, I, I believe Johnny, so. Yeah. Was it really? I, I think I might get killed by our fans for this. But yeah, it, 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 smoking and just... In at halftime, just thinking about life, and you're like, just man, it's like, man, I gotta chill out for a second. Yeah. So, hey, so let me <laughs> ask you this: with, with yeah. the CBD, did you originally start with marijuana? Were you were smoking that, or trying to? No, trying no, to no. Your no pain here's, at all? Here's, here's here's was a crazy fact: I have never smoked marijuana in my life. Zero. Really? Never. So this isn't like a Barack Obama thing where it was just like, hey, I did it once. <laughs> no, I did it once. No, no, no. never. never. So there's, and, and the there's, reason, there's the reason, no pictures coming out from when you were oh, in college. I can promise you, can promise you no. There, there's nothing out there. <laughs> right. so, and the reason is, so when I grew up, my dad, my dad, um, my dad would actually give my my brothers and I, well, he didn't give to me, uh, marijuana. Yeah. And uh, In L.A.? No, this is in San Diego. Yeah, he grew up in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, well, San Diego. Sorry, same same, same city. Let's face it. California's so, California. So I'm getting my dad smoked and stuff around the house. And even at a, a young age, I always wanted to do things opposite of what my brothers were doing. So, you know, they were smoking. My dad would give it to them. And, you know, not that I knew anything about what it would do and all that stuff. I just didn't want to do it. And so as a kid growing up, I was always trying to do it the opposite. When they do something, I do something opposite, different. As I, I got older and realized what it was, and had friends doing it. There's something about it where I just didn't want to go that that way. And when I started playing sports, yeah, you know, obviously you have to avoid it at that right, point. Yeah. yeah. Then I knew that I certainly didn't want to mess with that. And and I didn't know anything else as I got older. But you know, I had I was drinking probably at the age of 13 or something. Had a few. I didn't like that. And I don't want to experience anything else other than that because I was afraid that that can lead to other things. Gateway drug. That's what that's yeah. in my mind. That's what I thought. Yep. So. Even as a guy that was being peer pressured into trying to smoke that at parties, I wouldn't do it. And of course, when I obviously made it into like college, and I, I, there's no way I was going to touch it. In pros, there's definitely no way I was going to touch it. Not sure. because Fuck that. you know of uh, it's not other, worth it. Man. It just wasn't worth yeah. it. It was illegal. We couldn't do it. Too much money on the too line. Much, yeah, yeah. Just, I didn't want to. I didn't want to mess with it. There, so, what do you think that's going now with all the CBD stuff? So, if you take these CBD supplements on a regular basis in the four majors, so. Baseball, basketball, uh, hockey, and football. Are you gonna get? Are you gonna pop hot if you're taking the CBD product? Well, so not uh, you know on ours. Yeah, not on ours because they, te- we they have, test for THC. They test we for THC. Zero. We have zero. But, but are, are you guys on that list for all of, all you know the major s- the sports that like? Hey, if you take Defy, you're good. Well, there is no. I don't even think there is a list yet. There's but, for Major right. League Baseball. There, there, there is, right? Yeah, there, for Major League Baseball, they have a list. Be, we would love to work with the NFL. <laughs> Into setting guidelines and letting our product be the standard for what they will look at and say, you, you know, this is NFL approved. It's but NFL approved. The reason why I think that it is not going to happen is because the NFL is not making any money off of it. I think eventually they will get into the C, in, into CBD, but they want to they want to make some money off of it. Even with gambling, gambling just got legalized in all fifty states, and they just partnered with uh, Caesars yeah, Hotel. With Caesar, yeah, yep. and it's like, hey man, we Especially know now you're Raiders, getting into yeah. gambling yeah. with Caesars. Like we see this. But here's Do you the think deal. that's eventually going to happen but with CBD? But here's the deal: I think that they're not going to have a choice at some point because it's going to be right now. It's it's heading in a, in a direction where. Players will have the right to use it because it's not going to be a Well, you guys got the negotiation coming up, right? So, so the new collective bargaining agreement is coming up soon. It comes There's up in 2021. 21, yeah. Yes. They're already in negotiation now. We were talking to a couple of guys last yeah. night. Uh, so now is the time to make that move, I think, right? You have to, like, make the push. You have to make the push Absolutely. at some point because it's not about it's not about now. It is, but it's not just about now. It's about the future of the league. And if the yeah. CTE stuff and all the injuries, yeah. the eighteen like the the life cycle of an NFL player is now down to eighteen months on average. It used to be three wow. years. Yeah, it used yeah, to be three yeah. years. 
Like, what the fuck, man? At some point, you have to protect it. Like, I do a lot of uh, CPG, like consumer package good stuff. Uh If I realized my product was was getting fucked up way too early outside of my window of max uh, profit, I would do something about it immediately. And they're doing it with the rules and stuff, but there's so much more you can do. Yeah, you know, the the NFL, they're they're certainly going in that direction. They're looking at all options for players. I think uh, Roger Goodell said about a year ago that they were looking at Allowing players to smoke marijuana. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. yeah. He, so he, he said it. So yeah, he, he said, said it. Yeah. It was 2017. Yeah. I think mouth. that's a while. Exactly. That's a while. He back. said that. So they're exploring this every day. They're not sitting there saying we're not looking at it because they are. The NFL is not sitting back saying that they don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Ever. They're saying let us just take a look at it. And like you said, they're they're kind of slow to react. They're they're like one of them very slow. Very Here, slow here's the problem with that: the NFL sees themselves as a product, and they are for sure, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. So they want to they want to react to the community properly, but they're also a trendsetter. If the NFL comes out and says, "You know what? We've looked at CBD, and there's no THC in it. We're going to let these guys do whatever the fuck they want CBD yeah. wise." The rest of the country oh, falls in line. That, that, that'd be huge. Like no shit. Yeah, yeah. That'd be huge. It's a yeah. it's a it's. Fucking billions of dollars a yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, everybody's invested. Seventy five percent of Americans watch the Super Bowl. Something oh, like yeah. that. It's a yeah. it's an incredible amount of people. So they can they can fucking step up for once and take a leadership role and make this shit legit. You know what I mean? The stuff that science is already saying is legit. But will they? And the players, question, yeah. not just science, but players and businessmen, everybody except for the pharmaceutical industry is like, hey, we should definitely do this. Yeah, the, the NFL needs to step the fuck up and do something. Well. <laughs> we'll see. I, I like. I'm I like, an NFL, like, hey. I'm an NFL employee. But yeah, exactly. Uh, listen, they will. They will. Again, they have. To I think be, they will too. Yeah, they've just got to be a little. You know, they have to do their. They're a little diligent in how they move. Yeah. They, they don't. They don't ever want to just rush to something and then have. It no, of course not. Yeah. So there's no for them. There's like no reason to just rush to doing it because it's hit the farm bill and everything else. They'll take their time, but I think eventually they'll come around and it will be. It will be the the. The solution to all the things that, that players are taking right now, popping these painkillers and yeah. all the stuff that we've dealt with, and I think that's where it's going. And even so, post-career stuff, but like to your point, um, so we we are all – we're pro-NFL. We're pro – we, we want to be an advocate for all the leagues. Every, everybody you know, is. And, and because so, it's, we love that shit. Yeah, like, so, no. All these uh, – like half of our friends organize – like fifty percent of their life around what happens in pro yeah. sports. Yeah, yeah. Like no yeah. shit, dude. It's like a, the biggest thing. And you know, so to that point, where where there, I think there's in this. This is all changing. This is why we're we're in it now because this is where the opportunity to really make an impact and a difference is. And you know, this is where you're going to see things start to change dramatically. And where you know the the problem is is that there's still issues. With certain parts of the industry, well, and the so issues are what you were that. saying before, right? Yeah. That there's no regulation, there's a bunch of frauds out there, and all that shit. Right? And but the other part of it too is, and this is also what we're going to do as a company is we're going to start doing trials, um, clinical trials with athletes, but also veterans too, because what you have to do is ultimately prove out these these claims, right? right. You know, yeah, because that's what they are yeah. as claims. So like you know, TD making his claims, that's about him. But when you put it on a package and then you have science actually prove it, you need to do trial studies to actually show that yeah, you there's, can't, there's a difference. You can't come right? with anecdotes. It's got to yeah. be right. objective. And, like, and, and so it, yeah. there's no doubt about it that it's, it is real and it's it, – you know, because there's too many people that, that have these Listen, testimonials. Listen, man, I've talked know? to hundreds of veterans, including myself. And you talk to we, yourself? I do, yeah. <laughs> hey, what did you say to yourself? Yeah, what did you say to yourself? <laughs> you say yourself? Man, you you should look. look Actually, look I talk like to myself. Shave. I talk to myself a lot, like Ricky Henderson talks to himself. Oh, have you ever heard that? Person? Yes. Oh yeah, Go Ricky Henderson. The whole Ricky thing. Henderson's no, I can't. My favorite. Let me hear it. Oh, Ricky Henderson. Have you ever heard David Cross has been on Ricky Henderson? It's no, so he, good. He's, he's Atlanta thing. guy, by the way. My all-time love David favorite Cross. Yeah, he's funny, man. Is, is I saw Ricky him. Love him. He's so funny. The best thing ever. So when I was in New York, he was doing a radio spot for himself. He sh- abbreviated his own name on a radio commercial. Hi, this is Ricky Henny. <laughs> and he, then he went into the products, whatever he was selling. 
I was like, wait, he just abbreviated his own name. It would be like he did third oh, person. Oh, hey, this is this is Ropod here. Uh, you know exactly who I was like. No, oh, boy. Ricky Henderson. They don't know that you call yourself Ricky Henny on the side. <laughs> that wasn't a name. That's probably like a club name where you're like you were ordering Hennessy. You're like, yeah, another one for Ricky Henny. Like nobody knows that, dude. You can't get on the radio and just shorten your own fucking name. That's crazy. But that was Ricky Henderson. The, the other one with the John Olerud story, where you know, oh boy, the the, the the batting helmet. Oh man, I used to play with a guy. Who wore a batting helmet playing first base too, and he was like, "It's me. I was on your team, bro." Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And we never cashed a million dollar check. He framed it. His first check. Oh, really? He yeah. got a million dollars in baseball and framed it. The A's went into their uh, accounting department. They were like, "Man, we cannot account for a million." <laughs> he never cashed a check. That is still not cashed. Oh, wow. Ricky Henderson didn't cash a million dollar check. <laughs> they figured it out, and they were like, "Hey, Rick, man, you got to go cash this check, but, bro." But we I were just scanned. There's an extra million. There's an extra million in the thing, and they were like, "Well, this was 1981." Yeah, 1981. Right? I still would have found a way to get a copy. Oh yeah, yeah. He didn't. He didn't cash it. And he goes, "Oh man, I, the check so big. I wanted to. I wanted to frame it." And it was like. Cool, but you know you don't get money into your account for that or whatever. So like, you break it out of the thing, or they issue another. Hey, you know what? Check. He could hit a high oh, fastball though. That he guy could he could hit he a could. high fastball. And speaking of which, it's yeah, Super Bowl weekend. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go. Let's go. All time faves. Who was your favorite teammate to play with? Favorite Shannon Sharp. Teammate. Did you like Shannon Sharp? Of course. Did I, you? Yeah, I love of Shannon course. Sharp. Yeah. Big Shannon Sharp. Shannon, love Shannon him, brought a lot. Shannon brought personality. The way he yeah, is right now on his show. Yeah. With Skip, yeah, he's toned down, undisputed. No, that's 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 him. him? Yeah. That's him. He's, okay. So that's real. That's real. Okay. I that's love what, that. What do you got? What you guys are seeing now? He's what, still got pipes too. Seeing? Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. That's yeah, fucking Jack. He's, he's, he looks like he's fucking twenty eight years old. Yeah, like, yeah. he does a Holy great shit. job. And he, I've learned a lot from him in terms of working out and staying. Just really. Oh yeah. Yeah. So Shannon, yeah, Shannon was fun. You know, we had a lot of great teammates, guys. You guys probably wouldn't necessarily know, but guys like Detron Smith. Uh, Derek LaBelle is a good teammate of mine. Byron Chamberlain, uh, John Mobley. Um, you know, Al I remember Mobley. John Mobley. Yeah, yeah. John yeah, Mobley. yeah. So, so those those, those are guys. I what about Atwater? I like that guy. Yeah, dude. At, I like Atwater. Yeah, he's I, awesome. Man. He's not, good you dude. don't see a whole lot of strong safeties. Fucking wrecking dudes oh, these yeah. days. Was that dude really there when you were that there? That dude fucking after wrecked you. people. No, Champ came in after he's me. Right but after like you, Steve yeah. Atwater, obviously he's eligible he for fucking he's eligible wrecked, wrecked people, man. And so he's he's the finalist this year. Name some strong safeties other than Steve Atwater right now. That are what Atwater just used any of them. Destroy any famous strong safeties. I would say, who's the GM for the 49ers? Oh, you're Lynch. John Lynch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John Lynch. Oh, he, dude, John he was, then, he was, yeah, yeah, he was awesome, like, too. Hey, John yeah. Lynch, yeah. John Lynch was a bad Like, guy. seriously, he's, he's, I've, he's I've never... a sexy I'm, position. To me, Atwater. Well, you have, you have John Lynch right now. You still have... You have Steve Atwater. Um, who's the other safety? I think uh, Dawkins went in, so he's not the other Okay, safety. yeah. He's in. Yeah. He's in, but that's th- that's three. Yeah. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. Seriously, man. It's not a sexy position. It's not like a running back or a quarterback. It's a hard one. It's a it's a difficult one. You and Atwater played together for a couple of years, yeah. right? Yeah, we yeah. played together so, for uh, four years. It, is there any hits that he did that stayed He just to light you up and practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, practice. no, no. He can't. Number one, we <laughs> rarely go one on one. Yeah, meaning first team versus first team. Yeah, yeah. So. And when we did, we didn't do a lot of hitting. Yeah, it was not there. contact. It was like no so, pads or anything. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Shanahan brought over the San Francisco sort of uh, practice routine. Pillow yeah. fights. Yeah. It's yeah. all about it's all <laughs> about speed. We didn't Pillow wear fights. a lot of pi- pads in practice. We just speed, not comfort. Well, hey, it yeah. worked out in 97 and 98. So what, what exactly. Do, right? Yeah, we'll pillow fight you. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> two championships. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't hear you because these two championships two champions. are in my ears. <laughs> They're in my ears. Who is the, who is the, the, the worst team? Or the uh, worst teammate? No. <laughs> oh shit! Wow, we'll go worst. It sounded teammate. like you had somebody locked and loaded. Yeah, you had. You, you got had excited. Somebody, I don't have a worst teammate. I, oh, who is the great. worst team that you hated playing because you knew you knew it was going to be a struggle? That's what uh, I'm saying. Kansas City. Really? The Chiefs were in tough. in Arrowhead. Both. Or just in general. Both. So when we played Kansas City, they had Neil Smith. They had Derek Neil Thomas. Neil Smith and yeah. Derek Thomas. Oh, oh. Man, Derek, Derek, he was a beast. Fucking yeah, beast. They had they had Donnie Edwards. Yeah, was a linebacker. They had a Dale Carter there. They had there. It was just a, especially in Kansas City. It's it rough. Was the, it was we the, were we, we were there, there for the AFC Mexico Championship. Team, yeah, I'm telling you, we've been That's to we we've been to every stadium to Camaro Head Stadium. Yeah, yeah exactly. Camaro Head, I love that. Yeah, yeah. We've been to uh, actually. Bert Koontz has posted something about a Camaro Head as his dad. Yeah, in full fucking Chiefs regalia because that's like real. Back in the eighties, that, that was the cra- one of the craziest stadiums we've been in all year. The like, Chiefs have by far the worst gear. 
ever. Like it's worst gear, like, best fans. Yeah, best, best fans. fans no, they, man. They it was loud fans. as hell in there. Yeah, it's not good. Huh? Seriously, yeah. we've been to like we went to the Penn State Ohio State game and Penn State the whiteout game. Hundred twelve thousand fucking people. It's loud. Arrowhead's louder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. it's ridiculous. You know, it's, For me, it was yeah. it was the loudest stadium I played. Like, how do yeah. you deal with that as a fucking running back? Like, you're just doing hand CBD, and arm signals bro. at that point. CBD, bro. CBD, dude. <laughs> That's the solution to everything. Yeah. <laughs> you're make just sure, doing make you're, sure hearing. you're just doing hand and arm signals, right? You can't fucking so, hear anything. So, did going you watch on. the Rams play the? Uh, the Saints. the Saints, yeah, yeah, we we saw it from the parking lot because we were doing a live show. Okay. They're, they're doing like they're doing the game, like yeah. uh, beach volleyball signals behind so the quarterback's doing, back, so they all did, sorts they of stuff. Too much, yeah. When you play in a loud environment, you have got to just you have to nix all the different audibles. You can't go into an, a loud environment having all these hand signals and different checks and all that stuff. You have to simplify the offense, go up tempo, and the snap, try to wear them out. The you snap mean snap needs to ham- well because you can't communicate. Yeah. So why are you trying to? Check to this and check to that. When you can't communicate, your tackles can't hear. So what it does, it, it makes everybody antsy. Now you can't hear the center or the quarterback tell the center when it snapped the ball. Hmm. You see how many penalties they had. They were jumping yeah. offside. So it needs to go on first sound. Tempo, first sound. As soon as you get to the line of scrimmage, snap the ball and go. Hmm. And so if you do that, you can, you can combat the noise. The second thing you have to do is you have to practice with that noise. I know the Rams may have practiced with a big speaker, but it's got to be so loud that you can't hear yourself think at practice. Right. So when you go into that stadium, you're not shocked by how deafening it is. And, and to me, it felt like they weren't prepared for it. I'm like, damn, did they even practice? Did you guys ever do that? Did oh, you yeah. ever turn the they fucking PA the, up really loud? They or bring what? these big old speakers, and they pump like jet sounds to it. Really? And that is really fucking like, interesting. That's I love that. And you practice. If you practice with those conditions. All week. All week. Wow. All week, and I, it, it drives you nuts. This is the first time I've ever sure. heard this. Same here, yeah. This is no, amazing. No, we did it all week. I love that. On, what were they playing the on the speakers? The jet engine. Just, oh, just, just a jet just, engine? Just, not like Metallica sh- or yeah, that's, Rebecca that, that's Black actually Friday. Like, oh, God. Really loud. Really loud. Really loud. No, Metallica don't. Like, like, freaking like an interrogation. Noise, like loud as, just, I mean, super loud. Yeah. And so I, can, I can't see, I can't even see, I can't hear what you're saying. And so it, it forces you to, to, to communicate a different way. Now, we did yeah. do some signals, but it was pretty minimal. We wanted to make sure we didn't do a lot of checks. We wanted our linemen to get to the line of scrimmage and go. Did you ever wear earplugs or anything? I never wore them, no. Did any of the guys? Do you- uh, some guys did, yeah. Man. Yeah, a lot, a lot of times the linemen wear them. Really? Because they don't need to hear shit. Because you're just looking at the ball, right? Yeah, they're looking down the line, and they're going, they're going off, off – uh, Site. So Man. you you it's well known that you had some issues with headaches on the field, right? Yeah. Back in the day, did the loudness trigger any of that shit? No, it didn't. You Thank just God. You, you just blend that out. Thank God. Yeah. So do you, do you feel like you could have played like let's say. Getting ready, you're on. It's Sunday. It's fucking ten a.m. Yeah. You're like fuck, my head hurts, man. Fuck this. Take CBD. You're good to go for the rest of the day, or what? I never had that happen. Where I was before a game, kind of uh, having a headache. Yeah, so no, like my Percy headache, Harvin stuff. Always, yeah, well, they were, was, was they per- were He's he's had yeah. some issues game day. Percy yeah. Harvin was game day was migraines. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, and, I, and he was. He, I mean, he was he was leaving games where it was just yeah. it was yeah. that like, bad. Yeah. Like my halfway through third came period during the game. Okay, so I, I never had it because I you know I I, don't, I was taking uh, medication to prevent it. Yeah, and but it still happened. But well, the trigger would be the exertion. So when I would go okay. and run, then I – It's a constriction off. of the blood vessels in your brain, basically. Yeah. It's what, what happens there for the audience. Yeah, but no, no – but to answer your question, I think – absolutely, because I'm not taking it now. And I'm, and I'm working out more – not more, but I'm working out pretty hard right now. So you feel like uh, – let's say you take tincture or C- whatever yeah. CBD you take, uh, an RTD drink or whatever. Today you go work out this afternoon. Maybe you do a two a day. Yeah. You feel good the whole time? Oh, yeah. So you feel, I feel like good and I so, feel confident that so, so you feel like as a as a as a prophylaxis as a uh, supplement yeah. before something happens that Absolutely. you could have taken that nine o'clock I, in the morning no, on game day and not had any there issues. Was no question in my mind. So what the fuck are we talking about? I know, right? There's, There's no crazy. side effects, bitch. Yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. Hey, league, quit fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> NFL, Roger Goodell, get it together. And Jesus Roger, Christ, I, Roger, I didn't say that. No, nah, I, didn't I said it. He didn't say that. But look, until the NFL is making some money off, I think it's going to be a while. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so we are at Super Bowl weekend. Uh, before we get off the air, let's hear your predictions on the game. We'll start with you. Who do you got? You know, uh, the <laughs> you Patriots. Seem man. Shocked. Well, There's always a like, like, John look, right look, now. Look, like, uh, <laughs> look, you know, uh, it's, I never thought about it. Yeah, <laughs> no Patriots, man. The Patriots. They 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 just 
continue to. It's hard to bet to, against Tom it's Brady. Hard to bet, right? It's hard to bet against them. I mean, they pull off miracles. They pulled one off in Kansas City. Yeah. I mean, the, that, that the, was the, the miracle. Super Bowl was insane. Kansas, I, Kansas know, City left two two plus to minutes him. on the clock and gave Brady the ball. That's a mistake. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it's they've just, done it twice this year. Good. They like, did it in Week Nine and they did it this fucking it's just, time. Yeah. You know, there's no team that's ever done what they've done. It's it's yeah. unbelievable. So it's hard to bet against them. So I would say the Patriots. I got you. Who you got? Who, TD, who you got? He's an NFL what, what employee. I don't know. If, uh, in real life? Four, yeah, four this, will, this, this will air after the game's it's over. for another oh. drink, probably. Wait, but after yeah. the game? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This will air after the game, yeah. So how do you want to ask me who the hell I got? Cause when, when so we can embarrass you afterwards exactly. for being wrong. We always do game. it. We always do it. All right, I'm going with the Rams. I'm going with the Rams. I like, I like that. I'm going with the Rams. Balls I like Here's that. why I'm picking the Rams in this game. I want to hear this. If you were to look at these teams and that you didn't have any names on these players or at least the names of the teams, just, and you said just strictly on just talent, talent alone. Madden ratings, so. yeah. Yeah, just who, who would you pick, right? You'd probably give a check mark to the Rams, right? Correct. But, Brandon Cook, C.J. Right. Anderson, yeah, 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 Todd right, Gurley, yeah. and Jared off how we give it to the yeah, Rams. The but I know, but just listen, listen, listen. <laughs> uh, and then the second reason I would say is when I look at teams, I try to find what have they gone through? Are they battle tested? Are they a team that can overcome adversity in a game? And when I look at the Rams, I look at their entire season. This team has been battle tested. They've had seven and one on the road. Seven this and one year. on the road. That's outstanding. That is crazy. They go from playing a game in Mexico where the game gets canceled. They go back home and they play. Yep. All the fires in LA. These guys have been transients for the last couple of uh, They're know, years. They're still transients. They don't have a home They're still yeah. transients. Transient. Yeah. Um, and then the shooting, all the emotional things they've, they've gone through. And then you talk about the NFC title game where you're thir- you're down 13 points to the New Orleans Saints. In New Orleans. In New Orleans. And that's loud as hell, too. We were at that first game. At, yeah. Rams, New Orleans, yeah. And you find a way to win that game. I got to roll with that squad. Cause I like that. Good, good. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been there before. And I know what that does to a team. It hardens you. It hard it hardens yeah, you to work you yeah. going through and you have calluses now. It's like the Warriors. They they're down ten points going into the fourth quarter, like we're still gonna win. We don't care. Yeah. Right. Like, you and see the them, confidence. What it did you to see them, it. right. What it did to, to them is it built that mental it strengthened their mind, like, okay. Like you don't panic in those big situations. You don't panic. That panic where uh with you know some receivers that ball goes through their hands yeah. sometimes. Do you remember that? We're not going to say who they are, Alshon yeah. Jeffrey. Because um, <laughs> I'm not I'm into, just saying, to name dropping that, Alshon Jeffrey. But <laughs> that he had caught that ball. I that would have been it, yeah. He the ball. That's, it's a, he Nick, the Nick, Nick is no, in the Super Bowl, on. maybe. No, maybe not. Uh. So, see, we always think that everything is automatic. What if they missed the kick? It's true. You're absolutely yeah. right. You still got to kick the field goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at some point, down the line, somebody's got to take some blame somewhere. That ball is in his hands. Right. It was. It was. Yeah. It is what it is. I, I still blame I'm Neil not, Jones for dropping that pass against the, yeah. the the Eagles. Even though he fell down, he should have got up and caught that ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my opinion as a Falcons fan. Whatevs. Anyways, the whole point of that is you, that you have to make the going play. going right. going through all that bullshit definitely strengthens your mind. It does. Like you don't. I, I've been in that situation. The first time I was ever in war, the first kind of crazy shit that happened I was like, holy shit. And the second time I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm just gonna go. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You you immediately react like your instinct and your training and your skill takes over and your yeah. brain gets the fuck out of the way. Yep. And I think that's like to your point, it makes total sense yeah, to that's, me. That's, it makes total sense. That's my perspective, and I, I see that happening to them. So. I'm picking the Rams. And, and I got to throw a third one here. Just the way Todd Gurley had that last game. 13 His yards. last two games. 13 total yards. No, he had, remember the, Cow- the Cowboys game. He had, a, he had a nice game. He did a, He did all right. Actually, the last three games. So, well, I guess. Been, so, really, three out, of, three out of the last four games, he had fewer than, I don't know, 60 seven, yards. 70 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Total, total, but he's still Todd yards. Gurley. Right. And, and that's, why, that's why I'm saying you still have this beast who should have been or at least he was um, mentioned as league MVP pretty much the, the entire yeah. season, yeah. right? I think it's a great matchup I because... I will be shocked if he doesn't go off. Said, if he does not go off. Okay. I, I honestly think that Call they're going to... I, I think that, that the Rams are going to go Belichick style and use Gurley like James White and you see Jay Anderson like they're using fucking Sony Michelle. They can. I really think they're going to do that. They can. Sean, Mc, Sean McVay will find a way. I, that, I that's my so. prediction for the game is that they use Gurley in the flat and they use Sony Michelle to run the ball. My that's, American oh, sorry, dollars are on the Anderson. Patriots for the fans at home. My heart, though, I'm wearing an old school Eric Dickerson jersey and I'm, <laughs> nice, I'm not going nice. with the Rams. You can't hedge your bet in this. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm not hedging a bet. My, so no, my money, I'm sorry. My money is actually on the Patriots. TD is called my heart, though. Like I want to see the Rams. Nope. TD, 
Chidi Instagram. just called you a pussy, bro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did that end oh, up? Let's get, let's get some tape measure. Let's <laughs> start measuring guns, brother. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he would murder the shit I out of you. I just simply said you got to pick a team. I did. Yeah, my wallet picked another team. I can't control my wallet. <laughs> just like Eugene <laughs> like, Robinson's yeah, wallet picked another prostitute LA, so the night before the game. So when, <laughs> That's the only reason we lost, TD. You know that. You know that, so my man. So when LA wins, you'd be like, yeah, my heart was with the Rams. So that's I'll be wearing an Eric Diggers in jersey. Everybody will celebrate me as I should. But I will, I will have lost a couple hundred dollars on that. That's true. This is the point in the show, by the way, where you get to the drinking bro of the week. Uh, right. That is somebody that inspired you, um, somebody that helped you on the come up or made you the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week drinking to? Drinking bro of the week to would go out to my buddy Frank White. Uh, Frank White has been a mentor to me um, since I was a kid. He was actually my first Pop Warner coach. Oh, that's and awesome. He was the one that gave me my nickname, which is Boss Hog. Uh, yeah. See, see you're at old Dukes of Hazard, guys, what you're saying. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't, but he made me walk <laughs> off, and um, he's been in my life ever since. He's actually here, so uh, yeah. It's, That's it's awesome. White. When you say here, you mean? He's in Atlanta. He's in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. That's great, yeah. He's, uh, and he, uh, he just had back surgery, so he's got this like contraption on. He looks like uh, the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> Walking real slow. <laughs> Walking slow, and it's, oh, they, yeah. he showed me the picture, but they put all these little pins in his spine. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Vertebrae, and it's like... <laughs> I, it was, I was squirmish. I couldn't. I couldn't see it. But. <laughs> He's feeling better, man. So give big ups to Frank White. Good, man. Man. Big ups we to Frank that. White. We uh, love hey, that. big ups to you guys. Big ups to Defy. Yeah. Big uh, ups yeah. to yeah. TD yeah. for being on the show. This is a childhood dream. You won me many a fantasy football champions, man. Uh, this, is a, this is a blast. <laughs> Did you win any money, by I've way? I've got $80 <laughs> for you. I'm putting nickels. <laughs> That's all for you. It's wooden nickels. Yeah, because I, I, go, yeah. I go last century. Yeah, yeah. I, I still yeah. like, to, like to barter with people. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? No shit. I treat myself like an old like an old century peasant. Oh, it's some wooden nickels for you, you know. And I move on about my day just because I like to have some excitement. Tell us where you can tell us where we can find you and your company and social media and on the internet. All right, Uh, Bo, hit him up. Drinkdefy.com. You can certainly find. I'm sorry, it's drinkdefy.com. Okay. And then what else, Bob? And then all the you know all the social handles are under Defy. Same. Thing. Okay. Know? At Defy. Defy one like word. At Defy. Defy. Okay. That's yeah. great. And what about D-E-F-Y. that? F Y. I couldn't even get my own, we, my own uh, name. D E F Y. We bought it. You did yeah. buy it. Stop. Did you really? <laughs> How much you pay for it? You know, it? trademark is a tr- tricky thing, man. It's a so pain in the we, uh, Holy we, we shit. We found an opportunity. It actually was the name we were, we are, we were. This is all kind of. It's all been very serendipitous, man. It's sure. It's all kind of happened the way it should have. Uh, hey, so th- it's, this, it's an this meeting here in Atlanta has all been very serendipitous. Yeah, it's well, total. One of our favorite players of all time. Seriously, We're lucky yeah. to have you guys. And uh, seriously, right we, we appreciate it. And, and where I, can we find you on social media, TD? Oh, I have so, oh man. At the I real Terrell Davis? Instagram and, and yeah, uh, I, think, I think I'm like, one is Terrell underscore Davis and then uh, the real Terrell Davis. You got to talk to my social team. I, don't I know even, we I don't, do. We I do. Know, where's Teresa? You know who's got? Where's, where's Teresa? Where's, where's Teresa? Where's Teresa? You know who's got the the, the easiest That's social me. media is OJ Simpson. It's all backslash backslash <laughs> backslash for that guy, and it's just like shit. <laughs> like even need a publicist. It's already built in. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for being here. You know you couldn't oh, leave God, drinking yeah. bros without an OJ he joke. I'm actually wearing an OJ jersey to the Super Bowl. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's, that's true. By the way, do, true. do you know OJ? No, we don't, but we'd love we to. We try to get him on the show numerous times. He seems busy. Yeah. He, he might be busy. He's busy because I said, I'm "Look, looking, I'm looking. I'm looking for OJ. By the way, everybody, he's still looking for the real killers. He's in. Um, he's in. Told him, look, no. he told him we would have the the show. Oh, he's, in he's in Summerlin. He's in Summerlin, Nevada. OJ coming on this show, I can tell you that. Oh, he's in. Great. He's in Summerlin, Nevada, just east of fucking Vegas. You know where it is. I'm gonna go find him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, at, he's, at, he's in Summerlin okay. all the time. That's where he is. He is. He, so he's playing a lot of golf there. He, he'll go to bars for the Bills game still, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, he does. And he, look, and he's still searching for the real killers. And to anybody out there, if you have information, contact Dan Holloway. <laughs> totally joking. TD, Bo, uh, thanks for being here, man. This is a fucking Anytime. blast. Appreciate Absolutely. And you gave the salute, too. Yeah. Man, this thanks. was an absolute pleasure. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for letting us drink. Thank you.